Oh, okay, so we were just talking about fear. All right, we were just talking about fear. And I was talking to our friend, uh, our friend Jonathan today. Not today, uh, Monday. I was talking to our friend Jonathan Monday. And, and Jonathan's a, a very spiritually led person. I don't know if you've ever met him. He goes to our Bible study. Uh, online Bible study. By the way, if you're interested, let me know and I'll send you a link. Uh, but Jonathan goes to our online Bible study and I find him to be a very spirit-led individual. He's, he's just continuously listening for the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's a gift. That is an absolute gift. God bless him for, for having it. God bless him for sharing it because Monday night he said, Ed, I, I just want to, I want to ask you something. I, I want to offer you an idea. I want to encourage you, encourage you. I want to encourage you when you when you preach, preach about the effects of fear. Preach against fear. Preach against hate. And I've, I've been thinking about that. And honestly, I've been noticing more and more that I'm bumping into this quite a bit. So this week, uh, and you can thank Right Wing Watch for this because they sent out like back-to-back-to-back clips, um, similar clips. Uh, but two of them... Uh, one was Jim Baker. Everybody knows Jim Baker. Remember the, the televangelist extraordinaire who, well, he found, him, found himself on the wrong side of the law. Uh, uh, well, he's, he's back at it. He's been at it for a while. And, and uh, he was doing a show and he was talking about how if Harris gets elected, if Harris and Walls get elected, oh, Christians... Christians are going to be persecuted like they ain't never been persecuted. Christians are going to be persecuted and prosecuted like like never before. We got to be real careful about who we're going to vote for because we vote for the wrong people. Vote for the wrong people. Vote for vote for those Democrats and and we're going to get we're going to be persecuted. Uh 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 uh. uh. Now I'm being facetious and. He, he was dead serious. You know, he, he was dead serious in, in what he was saying. I don't know if he really believes it, but he really wanted the people, he really wanted the people who were watching to believe it. Another one came from, uh, geez, every time I say, I, I want to say Paula Abdul, but it's not Paula Abdul. Obviously not Paula Abdul. It was Paula, Paula White. Paula White Kane, I think is her full name. She was... She, she is a, a sort of a spiritual advisor to Trump. She has been for a long time, loves the guy. And her words pretty much echoed, pretty much echoed Jim Baker's almost verbatim. Oh, Harris gets elected. Harris gets elected. We are going to, oh, 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 oh we're going to get persecuted. Christians are going to be persecuted. Christians are going to be prosecuted like never before, like we've never seen before. There's lots, again, you know, like many things. There's many different ways. There's many angles we can come at this conversation. We're going to try it from a couple. N- number one, I've said this before. I will say it again. When we become Christians, it comes with the territory. Being persecuted and being prosecuted comes with the territory. When we're truly following Christ, When we're really giving ourselves to following Christ, we will face persecution and prosecution. That's not to say it's always going to happen. It's not to say that it happens every day. It's not to say that it happens every time you step outside your house. It doesn't. Not here. Here we have a certain religious freedom. And in that freedom, we are able to to worship in our way, so long as it doesn't step on the toes of anybody else who's trying to worship, so long as it doesn't impede anybody else's right to religion as well. We are not persecuted and prosecuted here. We're just not. But Jesus tells us this is a very real part of the life. There is the possibility that it will happen. And and really, I guess what I would say about that here in the West is this, is that yes, persecution will happen. But one of the things Jesus never ever promises is that we will be comfortable. He never promises us comfort and he never promises us, promises us safety as Christians. When we go out there into the world, acting like him, speaking like him, as an ambassador for him, there is no promise of safety and there is no promise of comfort. None. Persecution should not surprise the Christian. 
that persecution comes should not surprise the Christian. And it shouldn't get in our way. The fear of persecution shouldn't get in our way, which, which leads me to the second bit. Over and over and over again, Scripture tells us, do not be afraid. Trust in God. Do not be afraid. God will take care of this. Do not be afraid. God will provide. Do not be afraid. God is with you. Do not be afraid. Nothing can truly stand against you when you are on God's side and when God's got your back and God, by the way, has your back. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And one of my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the Bible comes from, from Joshua. The first chapter of Joshua. You know, Josh, Moses has passed. Joshua, the, the leadership of the Israelites passed to Joshua. And God is speaking to him, and, and, and it, it happens a couple of different times, and it's said it in a couple of different ways. Go forth, Joshua. Do the work that I've asked you to do. Go forth and lead your people, doing the things that I've asked you to do. Go forth and lead your people, and embrace what, embrace all that I've given you. Do not be afraid, but be strong and be courageous. Know that I am always with you and that I will never abandon you. That's such a powerful testimony to, to how we are supposed to, to how we can, and, and I think how we're supposed to live as Christians. Do not be afraid. Go to work. Do the things that I've told you to do. Do not be afraid. Be bold. Be courageous in doing the work that I've told you to do. Be bold and courageous in sharing the gospel. Be bold and courageous in feeding people. Be bold and courageous in taking care of your neighbor. Be bold and courageous in taking care of the immigrant and the foreigner and the stranger and the people who are on the margins. Be bold and courageous in reaching out to those that nobody else wants to reach. Fear not. Fear not, fear not. And the truth is, anyone who preaches to you, who preaches to us that we should be afraid of something in this world, they're not preaching the gospel. They are not echoing the words of God. They are not sharing with you a message from God. There's another agenda at play. I guarantee it. There's another agenda at play. They're trying to sell you something. They're trying to manipulate you into something. Fear has no part in our message. Fear has no part in our message. The only thing in, in between you and I and, 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 and Denny's house here, the only thing we should be afraid of is our our testimony about God. We should only be afraid about what kind of ambassador for God we are. How am I living this Christian life? And even then, even then, that, that fear is, is, is destroyed because we're told perfect isn't something to worry about. Jesus is the one who is perfect. Jesus is the one that we need to worry about. Jesus is the one we worship, and therefore, in God's eyes, through Jesus, we are perfect. So no matter how I'm screwing up this Christian thing, I don't even have to worry about that. God will take care of it, right? I don't even have to be afraid of that. Again, I still am, to be honest, again, between us, I still am because I'm always worried that, I'm, I'm afraid that, I will lead people astray. I'll lead people away from God. I'll be a bad ambassador for God and, and, and people will walk away. But I'll take that up with my, my therapist. The third thing that occurred to me as I, third thing is I, that occurred to me as I, I, I thought about these guys telling us how we should be afraid of persecution because a Democrat gets in the office or because, of, because we vote for somebody else that we should be afraid of, of persecution and prosecution that's coming our way as though that was something that Jesus didn't warn us about. And that was something that, you know, if we're going to see persecution, this is, this is, this is based on some of the things that I'm hearing other Christian nationalists say. If we're going to face, if Christians are going to be persecuted, It'll be at the hands of other Christians. It, it won't be at the hands of, of the secular world. It won't. 
I don't even think it'll be at the hands of the evil one in, in the sense of like, you know, the Satanist church or something like that. No, I don't believe so. If Christians are going to be persecuted, it will not happen from outside. It'll happen from inside. Just recently, again, and you can thank Right Wing Watch for this. They pretty much wrote this whole talk for me, to be honest with you. But uh, they shared a, 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 a talk from that Joel Webin fella. That pr- Texas, I think, Texas preacher. That Texas voice. Um, that guy. He was, he, there's a clip of him talking about how uh, if Christian nationalism really took in, then, then it's, it'll be led by Protestants. Catholics, you're fine. You can join in, but you don't get a vote. You can be a part of it, but you don't get a say. You can be a part of it, but, but you don't get to offer your opinion. This is going to be Protestant in its nature. And, and of course, well, what, what does Protestant mean? I mean, I, I know I have a definition of it, and, and we have a sort of an understanding that Protestant is anything but Catholic, but I'm Anglican. And I consider myself a Catholic, but the Catholics consider me Protestants, and the Protestants consider me Catholics. Oh, where do I fit in? And, and the reason I even bring this up is because at some point, well, you're not Protestant enough. You're not my version of Protestant. And because you're not my version of Protestant, you're out. Persecution will happen because persecution will happen at the hands of other Christians because we won't think any of us are, are, are truly Christian enough. Are, 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 are we, that, no, we, we, we will continuously draw this circle of who is in and who is out. We'll continuously draw it more and more and more narrow. So if you really want to see true Christian persecution here in the West, if Christian nationalism takes hold, you'll see it. But it, it won't be because Harris and Waltz get into office. It won't be, again, at the, the hands of the secular. True Christian persecution will happen when one Christian turns on another. True Christian persecution will happen when one Christian desires more power than another. Or two Christians are competing for another. You understand what I'm saying. We don't have to be afraid. And as a matter of fact, we should not be afraid. We should be living our lives boldly and courageously. We should be living our lives for Jesus Christ as Jesus asks us to live boldly and courageously. Doing the things that he calls us to do boldly and courageously. No fear. No fear. So when Jim Baker or Paula White Kane or whoever else comes along and tells you, well, you must be, you got to be afraid. If Harris gets in, they're going to, no, nope. God is with me. Who can stand against me? Amen.